Hey, this is James. Uh, following on from last week regarding the stair, I'm going to continue with uh, another short tip on the stair. So I've just drawn a polyline here. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to use the default settings for the stair. And I'm just going to make an L-shaped uh, stair. Okay, and just to the extents. So like uh, last week, I'm just going to modify quickly the floor plan just so it's a little bit simpler. So I'm going to open up the settings, go to my floor plan display, grid and structure, and I'm just going to switch it to the built-in grid, uh, just for the simplicity of my representation here. Okay, so that's a little bit simpler. So I want to do some editing to this corner, uh, similar to what we did last week where we did winders, but I'm also going to do some curving uh, as well. So first I want to put the winders in here. So again, I'm going to go to the corner node and then go to the turning type options. I'm going to set it to winders, uh, change to fixed number of goings, and let's say maybe three. And then the offsets on the corner, I'm going to say fixed and I'm going to say, let's say 300. Uh, so the gap here on the corner is uh, 300 on both sides. So I'm going to hit OK. Okay, so that uh, that's better than what we want. So now I want to do a, a little bit of a curving here. So if I grab the corner and if I just choose fill it, and if I choose a fairly low number, so let's say like a 500 nil or something here, and if I click OK, I actually don't see any result. So this is because it can't modify the uh, uh, the b baseline of this stair uh, smaller than I think the width. So I think the width is a meter. So if we go and set this to one meter and click OK, then you can see that it curves. But now uh, I have large uh, landings here. So this is kind of not really what I was looking for. I can probably solve it by just looking at the settings for these corners, but I want to show a different way. So I'm going to undo this. So instead of just selecting the stair or selecting the this baseline, I'm going to choose the boundary, so the opposite uh, edge. And you can see that I don't get that blue line anymore. So by I can do that on the other edge. So if I, on the other edge, if I press tab, then you can see that the uh, tracker, uh, the uh, element info on hover now says boundary of stair versus stair. So you can see that that changes. But I find clicking on the opposite edge to select the boundary is uh, easier. So now that the boundary is selected, I'm going to click on this node, use the fillet option, and I'm going to fillet this one to the 300. Uh, like what we had before, uh, that we had as this uh, size here. So I'm going to say 300, OK. So now we have a nice curved edge here. And to get the size of the other one, I'm just going to get my circle tool, find the center point, and then see, so the other one will be at 1.3. So if, yeah, this is one meter. Then we will do filleting on the other edge at 1.3. So I'll hit escape on the uh, circle arc. So again, selecting the boundary, and then on this node, so when I don't see the blue line, I'm going to fill it this one, and choose 1300, and OK. OK, so this has a much nicer winder now that curves around this edge, but I can see my walking line is still straight. So let's see what uh, the distance is going to be for that radius. So this is going to be 800. So if we select the stair and we go into edit mode, and I'm going to change from my schematic view to my symbol view, select the walking line, and here I can fill it the walking line itself. So uh, clicking the corner of the walking line using fillet, and I'm going to fill it this to 800 and click OK, and then exit the edit mode.
Okay, so this is how we can get a uh, stair uh, with windings uh, with curved, uh, curved edges. So let's have a quick look at this in 3D. Okay, so this is uh, what we're looking for. So this, I think, is, uh, is one way to get uh, curved winders, either by curving the, the baseline or keeping the baseline straight and just curving the boundary uh, using this one corner to set how many winders are here. So I think maybe uh, modifying the boundary is a little bit easier than having to modify the baseline. Okay, hopefully that was useful. Thanks, until next week.